to look at a refraction problem that involves two steps, two times using its Snell's law. It goes like this. A beam of light strikes the flat glass side of a water-filled aquarium at an angle of 45 degrees. We're also given that there are three materials involved, air, glass, and water, and their indices of refraction are 1, 1.5, and 1.33. The question is too far to ask. At what angle does the beam enter the glass, and at what angle does the beam enter the water? So again, before we start, it is picture time. We've got three different materials here, and we've got the light going, let's see, from the air to the glass to the water. So I'm just going to draw a little column here, representing the side view, a little slice of glass. And so we can imagine that out here is outside of the aquarium. This is where the air is. In here is inside the aquarium. This is where the water is. And this is that side of the aquarium. This is the glass. Kind of a side view. Fish here, air out here. And we're given that the beam of light is hitting the outside at an angle of 45 degrees. So I have this light ray coming in. I'll go ahead and draw it in my normal line and show that that's 45 degrees right there. Uh, we can kind of predict a little bit of the path that it's going to take. It's going from a fast medium like air with a low index of refraction to a slower medium, glass, that has a bigger index of refraction. So you can expect that that beam of light is going to bend toward the normal. In other words, my index of refraction here is going to be smaller than my, uh, I'm sorry, my angle of refraction is going to be smaller than my angle of incidence for that first boundary. And then you can see that it's going to hit another boundary where more refractions may happen or additional refractions may happen. And in this case, it's going from glass to water. I'm going with a bigger index of refraction to a smaller index of refraction. So it's slow to fast. It's going to bend away from the normal. I'll draw in a new normal. And if it kept going, it'd go straight, but it's going away from the normal. So the second one, we can expect that the index of, I'm sorry, the uh, angle of refraction is bigger than the angle of incidence. I'm drawing that away very well. Let's call that away. Something like that. Okay, so again, two boundaries, two places where refraction happens. Happens when it moves from the air to the glass, and happens once the light moves from the glass to the water. And we want to know uh, about that angle of refraction in both cases. In A, as it enters the glass, and then we'll worry about B, as it enters the water shortly. So for A, we're just worried about this boundary. So I'm just going to draw that boundary here and show for air to glass what we know. And we know that the first or incident angle is 45 degrees, and the first material is air. We're looking for that second angle, and we know that the second material is glass. So we pretty much have everything we need to sub in for Snell's Law. And so I'll go ahead and substitute air as my first medium. glass as my second medium. And when I solve for that second angle, I'm going to get 28.2. I'm sorry, 28.1 degrees. So you should check that you can get 28.1 degrees. So what that is, on this picture, that's this, pic this angle right there. So I've solved A already. 28.1. For part B, now I want to know when the light goes from the glass to the water, what's the angle in the water? In other words, what's the refracted angle for the second boundary, this boundary right here? So let me just draw this second boundary now. So the second boundary is glass to water. So glass, draw the normal line, show it bending away as it goes into the water. And we know a whole bunch. We know the first material now is glass, which is a given n value. The second material now is water, which has a given n value. 
we're looking for that second angle, and you can see that if you want to use Snell's law, you need one more thing. You need to know that incident angle. To solve for theta 2, you're going to need theta 1. And if you look back at this first picture, you can see that we've got some parallel lines and an intersecting line, and there's some geometry, that alternate interior angles, that says that for this setup, is that 28.1 degrees? That's 28.1 degrees. In other words, my new theta 1 is 28.1 degrees. And now you're good to go and sub it in for this second problem. Again, this is all physics problems. The picture, getting the picture right is so helpful. Listening to your given is so helpful. And then you can go ahead and substitute and solve for the problem as I know you want to. Good luck.